All right, real quick, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of things on this uh, Cummins ECU here for my customer. Um, basically, the complaint is that there was no uh, signal on pin number 9, which is for the camshaft sensor. And also, I believe they were having a code for no communication with the injection pump. Okay, so right now, I have it off. Don't have any. I don't have an injection pump hooked up. So we should see uh, codes for no communication. Okay, there we go. We see the uh, 1689 no communication. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. I'm going to actually plug in my VP44 here. And now we should be able to turn it on. I should be able to erase the code. I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to let the lights reset. I'm going to turn it back on. And we should see that that code is gone now. All right, so there, that code is gone. The only thing we're left with is water and fuel, which uh, that's because my input is a little bit messed up. Can't get rid of that one for some reason. I think I had the wrong pot in there. And also, uh, the transfer pump circuit is out of range because I don't have enough uh, uh, load on there to make it think that it's actually there so that those two are normal for my tester don't don't really worry with those okay so we see our communication with our VP 44 through the communication lines are fine uh, also the control for the relay we'll see that come on here this this uh, fuel pump relay this red one so you can see it just it's bright when it comes on. Let me wait for it to reset again. All right, you see how bright it come on? That's good. Uh, so now we're gonna check the input to the um, camshaft sensor. Okay, and that is pin nine, which I have this guy hooked up right here. And this is a low signal. You can see with our oscilloscope there that we have nothing. If I turn on this real quick, I'll actually I'll show you that it's being pulled to ground. Okay, so I'm gonna take my probes and I'm gonna put one on five volts, and I'm gonna put another one on pin 9 and we should see 5 volts okay and that's because uh, this pin is being pulled low and I'll show that to you here in a little bit but let's let's follow uh, follow this circuit so that circuit comes over to here is there a test point for it so I'm going to turn this back on and I'm actually I'm going to start injecting um, a camshaft signal into it. Let me just turn my generator on. And let's get this back on. And there we go. So the red is the oscilloscope probe hooked up to the output of the function generator that, you know, before it goes into the ECU. So that red will always be, should always be that as long as the function generator is on. And now the blue probe You'll see here, I'm going to touch the back of pin 9, and you see it matches. So the blue probe is going to be this one that I have in my hand that we're going to go around and check stuff with, okay? Because this, this signal gets a little little weird. Okay, but that's the pin 9, and basically that just runs straight over to this side of the board where it gets its conditioning at um, before it hits this main brain here. But um, here here is the test point for this side of the board, and we'll see that it's still identical signal okay and we're gonna come down here and we're gonna find the same signal at this resistor here this is a 47 uh, thousand ohm resistor I believe it's basically it's a pull-up so on the other side is ground and this is the pull-up for the signal so if we come over here again I'm gonna put this probe here so that we can uh, get 5 volts because 
we need something to reference the ground to. Let me open that camera back up. And you're going to see here that it's, you know, showing 5 volts. So this is your ground. And that's, you know, pulling that signal down to ground when it's not in use. That's why it's not floating around. And that, that's pretty normal for most ECUs um, that the sensors are, are being pulled low when not in use. But now let's go back to our oscilloscope here. And now this signal uh, comes through pin 9, comes over here. That's where we hit it at the test point. It hits this uh, pull down resistor. And then it comes over here to uh, this guy right here. This is the input to a uh, inverter chip. And basically this inverts the signal. So this is the input to the inverter chip. And this will be the output of our signal from the inverter chip. And you can see that it inverted it. So basically when our cam sensor is high, the inverted signal will be low and vice versa you know when the cam signal is, is low our inverted signal is high and then from here um, it actually it goes through another pull down uh, but you know I'm not going to fiddle with that it goes into another pull down and then it comes over here to this uh, this is a uh, Schmidt trigger so this one it actually flips it back around so we have our signal coming from our inverter here going into this uh, Schmidt trigger and it flips it back around to give us basically the same signal <laughs> we had when we started. This is the last stop, this output from this uh, Schmidt trigger here is the last bit of conditioning before it goes to the processor. So I can't remember what leg it was. I think it was... I think it was 13. I think it was this one. Yeah. And you'll see we have the same signal going straight into the processor. So all our signaling is clean coming through the board. There's no shorts in there. Uh, there's no hardware failures like where it's, you know, getting lost uh, through a crack resistor or anything like that. All, everything, all that is good. Um, I already inspected all the joints uh, before the video. They're, they're all clean. There's no, no issues there. So the only other thing could be the logic in the uh, processor that is not recognizing the signal that's coming in, but that, that's pretty easy to check with our live data here on our scanner, uh, which, you know, truthfully, you could see it on the scanner before doing all this. It's just that, you know, I had it open and I'm doing a, you know, deep inspection of it. So I, I have to check everything, not not just a scanner because sometimes just a scanner you won't catch you know if there's something else causing it but uh, here we can see the engine speed position is 949 remember uh, oh I don't think I said I had it set for 950 I have it set for 950 rpms and that is exactly what we have there so if I unhook it you'll see that it gets lost Okay, and I'm going to hook it back in. And this one's kind of slow to read data, so you just got to ignore how kind of clunky it is. It's, it's just system. But uh, I can also, I can give it a uh, crank sensor signal. And I have that one set at 950 as well. So we can see now our engine RPM. Uh, this is the main one that we want right here because that is that is the uh, the one that my customer was concerned about and I would say if, if you're missing the signal there then most likely the sensor is bad or you know there's a break in the wire terminal maybe or maybe the wire itself is you know not making its way to the ECU but as far as the ECU internals and logic go uh, it, it's working perfectly fine